What could be cooler than space travel or nuclear fusion? How about space travel powered by nuclear fusion? Sounds like science fiction? It isn't. A UK company called Pulsar Fusion just announced the first nuclear fusion powered rocket design. Let's have a look. Right now, getting to Mars or other distant planets is a slow process, and it all comes down to the rockets we use. Most spacecraft today rely on chemical propellants. Think of the stuff that powers SpaceX's Starship or NASA's rockets. These propellants mix fuel and an oxidizer ignite them in a big explosion and use that to push the rocket upward. The thrust you generate with those is typically in the range of hundreds of thousands to a million newton, which is what you need to get off the planet or out of bed on a Monday morning, but then I repeat myself. But once you're in space, you have a problem. Chemical rockets burn through their fuel fast, and there's only so much fuel you can pack into a rocket. This means that for most of the trip to the Moon or Mars, you're just drifting. With that method, a trip to Mars takes about nine months, long enough for your passengers to reproduce. The underlying problem is that you need a lot of chemical propellant, both by mass and volume, to generate a thrust. So what fuel do we know that excels in terms of energy generated from small masses and volumes? Right, nuclear power. And since some people don't like the idea of shooting radioactive materials into space, preferably nuclear fusion. The UK company Pulsar Fusion agrees. Last week, they unveiled the design plans for their Sunbird project, which you see in this animation. It's the first time we have a nuclear fusion-powered rocket concept that actually seems possible. The idea is pretty straightforward. They use deuterium-helium fusion. This fusion process creates very fast-moving protons. Then they direct those protons with strong magnetic fields and push them out on one end of the rocket. They estimate the thrust that they can create that way to be about 10 to 100 Newton. That isn't remotely enough to get a rocket off our planet, but it is enough to accelerate it once in space. This thruster could cut travel time to Mars by about one half, and that's only the beginning. Pulsar Fusion plans to start testing components of its power system later this year with a bold goal to achieve nuclear fusion in space by 2027. But fusion isn't the only nuclear option. There are also several companies working on using nuclear fission for space thrusters. There are two types of this. The first one, nuclear thermal propulsion, works by using a nuclear reactor to heat up a propellant like hydrogen until it gets super hot, expands and shoots out at the back to create a thrust. NASA has been tinkering with this idea since the 1960s, but they're finally pushing forward with it. They're currently teamed up with the DARPA to test a fission-powered rocket called Draco. They too hope to have a prototype by 2027. The second way of using nuclear fission for space travel is called nuclear electric propulsion. This one uses nuclear fission to generate electricity and then one uses the electricity to accelerate charged particles and thrust from them. This method is highly efficient so the fuel can last for a long time but the thrust is really small. So so this isn't going to get us to Mars. It's however useful for small maneuvers, for example to keep missions on orbit or to maneuver them around the remainder of those missions that didn't stay on orbit. Elon Musk wants to bring people to Mars in the near future and he said he's hoping to use the next launch window at the end of 2026. These launch windows come approximately every 26 months and are when Mars and Earth are closest to each other. But the longer such a trip takes, the more problems can occur. So I'm somewhat surprised that SpaceX doesn't seem to be working on nuclear fusion powered thrusters. Personally, I think that nuclear fusion is the obvious space propulsion technology and it isn't as far off as you might think. Because to use nuclear fusion as a propulsion system, the fusion reaction doesn't need to generate net energy. And that's the major problem with building nuclear fusion power plants, the net energy. But for a propulsion system, you just need to generate thrust with it. Of course, the more energy efficient you can make that, the better. But to me, it seems very possible to use nuclear fusion thrusters 
before we can build nuclear fusion power plants. Why can't other people see this? Not like this is rocket science. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.